Every season of Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story that has you rooting for someone and against someone else. You will want to watch episode after episode to see what happens next until it all finishes with a hopefully satisfying conclusion. Each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end, from the time that they are introduced until they inevitably get their torch nuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. Now for reference, we are only observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And since Jonathan Penner is a storyteller who has worked on many films and TV shows, it seems like a good segue to my YouTube channel, Film Heart, which is all about movies. I review them, do in-depth analysis videos, and Mary and I even do full-blown discussions about them. It's a lot of fun. I would thoroughly enjoy you coming over and checking it out and subscribing. Links in the description. 39 days, 18 people, one, survive. Jonathan Penner returning to play for his third time on Survivor after a villainous origin story in Cook Islands where he bluntly spoke his mind, was a crazy good fisherman, but was perceived as being untrustworthy. Upon his return in Micronesia, things seemed to be on the upswing as he was less uptight than his prior showing, but an injury to his knee during a reward challenge ended up doing him in and led to a sad, tearful exit. So what does he have up his sleeve for his third time on this adventure of a lifetime? Let's find out. The season kicks off with us meeting the 15 new castaways split across three different tribes. This is the first time the Survivor has done three different tribes since season eight All-Stars. We then meet our three returning players, Russell Swan from Survivor Samoa, who's pulled from the game that season from passing out during a challenge and almost dying, Michael Scoopin, who fell into the fire infamously in Survivor the Australian Outback, and finally, Jonathan Penner. I got injured in a challenge. It was awful. You know how on fire I am to win this thing? You know how much I can taste this? And you know how I, I can actually see it? 39 days from now, I'll make a million dollars. We then hear from Jeff Probst about how these returning players bring valuable survival experience to their tribes and says, Russell, you're on Matt Singh, Scoopin, you're on Tandang, and Penner is on the Red Calabao tribe. He then says, you all have a limited time limit to grab all the supplies you can on this boat to bring back to your camps. It is a mad dash to get fruits, chickens and when jeff says everyone has 10 seconds left 10 seconds left before what happens before you got to get off the boat brother you played this game before already back talking jeff that is classic penner we then land on the tribes beach and penner says this season survivor is a job for him he knows how it's a marathon not a sprint and this confessional from him comes across as very upbeat he's feeling good about all this however the five new players on his tribe carter katie dawson Dana and Jeff Kent say, hey, no veteran player can win this season. They need to go. They know that Jonathan is a good guy. You know, it's all good, but anybody's going to win this game. It ought to be one of us. Not that Jonathan's not a good guy, but just for the mere fact that he's a returning third time player. And I think he's had his time. And I think that um, I'd like to see one of us win it if it's possible. So um, he's out as soon as we can get him out. What should seem obvious to any veteran player is that bonding with your fellow tribe members in the first few days is crucial to avoid having a target on your back. What you shouldn't be doing is going by yourself looking for an idol. Even if he finds it, he's He's out there searching for him. Oh yeah. I already don't like the shady stuff that's going around with Jonathan. I mean, we all stick together. We're like a family and he's just off doing his own thing and I feel like that's not unity. So he's dangerous. Penner does end up finding a clue to the idol inside of their rice container, and it says the idol is right under his nose, which he doesn't quite know what that means yet, but he soon will. Anyways, it definitely seems like Penner's butt is on the line with his tribe, which the anti-Penner movement is being spearheaded by Jeff Kent, so immunity is definitely needed. It becomes a neck and neck race on the puzzle, and... <laughs> 
and that is it for the premiere of Survivor Philippines. Coming off the backs of Redemption Island and South Pacific being the last two times we had new players mixed in with returnees, people are rightfully wary of the returnee players versus a cast of newbies. Boston Rob dominated in one Redemption Island, Coach and Ozzy dominated South Pacific with Coach finishing in second and Ozzy finishing in fourth. And of course, if you want to go back to Micronesia, the last time Penner played, which was returnees versus new players, returnees kind of dominated that season. Penner was a villain his first time out, medically evacuated his second, and here we see him be being positioned as the first to go on his tribe if they lose immunity. Thankfully, they won and he has an idle clue. But like in All-Stars, those who have had previous success are being targeted. So how will Penner fare and how will he make adjustments to get further in this game? We shall see. Episode 2 begins and like a lot, and I do mean a lot of the time through the pre-merge, it is raining non-stop. You see people constantly wet and it looks miserable. The Calabao tribe is sitting around in the shelter trying to stay warm while playing some friendly games of checkers, but this frustrates Penner because he knows the idol is somewhere in their camp, it's probably in the shelter, and with everyone in the shelter, he can't really look and he really wants to look. When what he really should be doing is probably just playing checkers with them instead until it's time to get out of the shelter. Later on, everyone tries to move to a nearby cave to see if that will provide them some much needed cover from the rain, and when they go off, Penner stays behind and while looking for the idol, Dawson returns. What are you looking for? My lens washed out. I was looking for my glasses. I couldn't find them. Did you smell them? Yeah. Dawson comes into camp, so I made up this insane story. I lost my glasses. I had to go under to get them because the rain washed my contact lens out, which was ridiculous. Fatuous lie. It seems like they believe this, but once again when they leave, he goes on a crazy hunt, sacrificing valuable time with his tribe for an idol, will it pay off? But then it finally clicks as to where it is. For the first time in three tries, I have the hidden immunity idol. It's fantastic. You have the hidden immunity idol and you feel that you can dance forever. Nothing can touch you now. Of course, that's not true. Yeah. Ah! He has the idol, which can save him for a tribal, and Penner is in pure joy. He never had individual immunity in any prior season, despite being the first to exile in Cook Islands, but basically not being as smart as Yule, so he didn't get the idol before him. Penner's tribe is then at the immunity challenge, and once again, it comes down to a puzzle, which results in... Episode 3 begins and uh, Penner says his butt hurts and the shelter isn't helping that. Dana then sits on the rice container and realizes the bull logo that was on there is now missing and everyone's like, crap, what was the bull logo? Was it an idol? And everyone realizes, ah, that's what Penner was doing all by himself. He has the idol, and it was right under our noses this whole time. Penner needs some sort of in, because right now he's just making himself a bigger and bigger target for his tribe, which will undoubtedly result in them attempting to do a split vote to flush his idol out, which he doesn't really want. But anyways, at the immunity challenge, once again, it comes all down to the puzzle. By the way, the Russell Swan Matt Singh tribe has lost every immunity so far, and their mess of a tribe is eating up a whole lot of screen time. Anyways, back at camp, Penner recognizes Jeff Kent does not trust him and thinks it's a load of bollocks. So to get him in good, he makes a risky play. I believe Jeff knows that I'm an experienced player. He's very wary of me, but I want him to be on my side, and I want him to trust me. And I think that you think that I have the idea. I do have the idea. Obviously, you want to get ahead of the game, and I want to too. You know, and if it means I got to ride in your boat because you got some power and you got some knowledge on how to go forward, then I ride in your boat for a while. Okay, all right, man. Good deal. At the end, he wanted to cut a deal with a handshake, so I gave him a four-finger handshake, not a not a manly shake, not a five-finger handshake, because I'm not so committed. In my book, unless it's a manly handshake, it's not going to count. It doesn't seemingly pay off. Not yet. Episode 4 sees Jeff Kent having some more time to think about it though, and says, yeah, you know what, let's work together. 
I can see you helping us make connections with the other tribes, and I can help you getting good with those who are on our tribe. We then see Carter, Jeff Kent, and Penner make a three-way alliance, and the girls are in another part of the camp saying, those guys are probably making an alliance right now with each other, so we should make an all-girls alliance. They say this, but the storytelling doesn't really give it any real weight, so it doesn't seem like it's that important or that it's really gonna happen. We then go to the immunity challenge, and Matt Singh is desperate. They have yet to win immunity, and they take the lead over the other tribes, but in the end... Episode 5 has the tribes getting switched up. Kind of. Matt Singh is dissolved. Russell Swan was voted out the last tribal. And Malcolm, the physically superior of the two remaining players, goes to Tandang. And Denise goes to Penner's tribe. Calabao then loses the reward challenge for the first time this has happened all season. And back at camp, we see Dana struggling hard. As I mentioned before, it has been raining almost non-stop over 12 days in the Philippines. And it is clearly taking a toll on everyone. Penner does his best to help her stay warm since he says he is a little fat and Dana has no fat, but it doesn't seem to make any difference for her as she ends up needing medical. So they come out with Jeff Probst, who does his usual thing of making sure that she's good to go. And medical says, yeah, she can stay. But on a side note, and this is an important side note, Dawson says, oh, Jeff Probst's out here, huh? Well, I want to jump him romantically, but now is not the right time for that. But then Dana decides to quit. She's not pulled by medical, but she's clearly struggling. Penner empathizes with her since he knows exactly how how this feels. And out of nowhere, Jeff Probst is in my camp, which is, you know, typically I jump up and down and maybe jump on him, but it just wasn't good timing. I can't stay here. I can't be out here sick anymore. I felt exactly the way she feels. I totally empathized with her. I was weeping. I was so frustrated. Then at the immunity challenge, they are down a member, of course, and without a Matt Singh tribe available to blow it hard for them, it's a tight, tight race between the two tribes. And... Tandang wins immunity by seconds! Literally by seconds, they lose the challenge. Heartbreaking. Back at camp, the women try to persuade Denise to join them, but it is actually Jeff Kent who says, hey, the guys have the numbers, join us. She agrees, and then the debate begins between Katie and Dawson. Both are not great in challenges, and Penner says, this is a big decision for them. Katie did not perform well today. She performed poorly. And I can't say that that's what cost us the, the challenge, but it didn't help. But before today, Dawson has just been the weakest member of the tribe. I don't think she performed particularly well today. I don't think she performed disastrously. It's a big choice, actually. At Tribal Council, the big decision ends up being to vote out Dawson in a five to one vote. Dawson is no Julie Berry, that's for sure. Episode six has Penner worried because now they are down two members in comparison to Tandang, who's of course up two members over them. And with a merge coming soon, this could make or break their game. We then see Katie spill the beans to Denise that Penner has the idol, and she says he needs to go. We then go to the reward challenge, which is a bit reminiscent of a similar challenge in Guatemala, where the tribes essentially need to push a large ball into their goal, except this one is messier, given the mud. Round one begins and it is tough, but despite the back and forth nature, it quickly comes to a standstill, and the tribes make this an endurance challenge of sorts. Endurance is what's gonna win. This is like heaven. Well, yeah, it's like something. But then, Scoopin and Penner decide to talk turkey, as Penner says, and in a move that seemingly no one really likes, but they all kind of agree to. But what's really interesting just for us to watch, Tan Dang agrees to forfeit the challenge for Calabao's rice, and Calabao gets the sandwich reward with letters from home. Penner's banking on his ability to catch fish like he did in the olden days in Cook Islands, where, to be fair, he was catching them like it was nobody's business. But this season, we have yet to see him do that. He is six years older, after all, and this is a totally different environment. Environment. Anyways, Jeff Probst agrees to let this deal take place, so they get the short-term luxury of sandwiches and letters from home, but back at camp there is a stingray not but a few feet away, and Penner misses catching it. Twice. Carter says, this sucks. Jonathan comes back, and I'm like, did you catch anything? And he's like, yeah, yeah, we caught two fish right there. 
Good lord. Wish we would have got that stingray. Calabao then loses immunity. So now with this next vote out, they're going to be down three members to Tandang. That is if Denise doesn't flip with Malcolm to the other side. Jeff Kent says it is time to knock out Penner. No one wants a returnee to win. Carter says, okay, but let me ask Penner what he thinks about voting him out. Penner, what do you want to do? Katie or Penner? I hate to lose Katie. Credit to Penner for taking this in stride and not being upset, though knowing Carter, Penner may have just assumed that uh, Carter's just really tired, and when he said that question, he wasn't truly thinking between Katie and Penner. But on the other hand, maybe he was, and maybe Penner knew exactly what Carter was thinking. Either way, he did a good job. Penner then lies and tells Katie that we all want Denise out, when of course it is Katie. But she doesn't believe him, and that's the key. Not that it really matters though, as at Tribal Council, Katie is voted out four to one. Katie, the tribe has spoken. Time for go. Episode 7 has Penner saying he received that one vote from Katie, but he never saw it coming. People are lying, and he says he always forgets this. This is one of his biggest game weaknesses, that's what he says. But then it happens. Down 7 to 4, it is time for the merge, which Penner is excited by. New lifeline for us. There are four of us, there's seven of them. We're hoping there's dissent over there and that we can pick one or two people to come over to our side to use for a while and then cut them off if we can. Right away, Penner recognizes Lisa from the Tandang tribe as someone who acted on the Facts of Life sitcom. But while he recognizes her, it turns out that he had never recognized Jeff Kent on his own tribe, who is a bona fide major league baseball MVP. And he never will recognize this during the game. Right away, him and Lisa connect and he says she is someone he could easily see falling into a final three. Penner then pitches to Scoopin that they work together, and Scoopin says, yeah, I'll think about it. But then we see Jeff Kent say to the new players on the Tandang tribe that, hey, Scoopin and Penner are returnees, as if you didn't know this, but they cannot win. They have had their shot. So everyone decides we will split our votes on Penner to flesh his idol. Play four for our seat, and we play four for... I, I, four four is all you need. He doesn't have the idol. We already vote. We all just vote for Penner. He's gone. Then at the immunity challenge, it has been a while, but Penner back talks Jeff Probst. Penner is out of this game and in trouble at tonight's Tribal Council. Well, thank you. For <laughs> Glad you're on the show, Jonathan. Thank you, buddy. Me too. Prior to Tribal Council, Penner says if the players he thinks are voting with him actually are not, then he is a bad judge of character. Then it is time to reveal the votes at Tribal, and after all the talking that took place, things were made clear that Penner is not in the loop, so he plays his idol. Thank you. You're welcome. This is a hidden immunity idol. Any votes cast against Penner will not count. First vote, Penner does not count. RC, that's one vote RC. Jonathan Penner does not count. Pete, one vote Pete. Penner, three votes Penner, none of them count. RC, two votes RC. John Penner does not count. Pete, two votes Pete. Penner does not count. RC, eighth person voted out and the first member of our jury. RC, RC, tribe has spoken. That was the best play for him, given had he not played it, he would have been voted out because RC got one less vote than he did. Episode eight begins and Penner says he feels hurt and betrayed because there were secret talks about him behind his back and he was not made privy to any of them by anyone he thought he was aligned with. He isn't gonna quit though. I'm not resigned to going home. I'm just, there's no quit in me. But the only way that I can get further now is by take my foot way off the gas pedal, climb into the back seat, pull a blanket over my head, and hope they forget that I'm here for a little while. But, but they now have betrayed me. So all bets are off. At the reward challenge, his team wins. And while on the reward, we see the losing team talk. Pete says, yeah, we're getting up Penner next, but we will keep scooping for a little while longer. Then for those who are actually on the reward, everyone is talking about how they don't really like artists Pete and Abby Maria, since they tend to suck the fun out of things. Penner says, yeah, people like that suck, and let me explain why. While explaining why that sucks, Malcolm sees right through this charade and knows Penner is just trying to get the target off of his back, aka not staying under the radar like Penner said he wanted to do. I hate that kind of bullying mm -hmm. and that kind of despotic, you know, like a tyrant. And it's something Penner's trying to take advantage of right now to turn the vote against one of the three instead of himself. I, I honestly do not believe that I can win the game at this point, but I would like to see any of the four of you or Carter 
be there. It is time for the immunity challenge, and Penner says he has never won individual immunity before, but he knows now is make it or break it for his game in the Philippines. He needs it to survive, and when he gets it, he says he is shoving it in the other players' faces. Then at the immunity challenge, it comes down to a snake puzzle, something we saw Penner dominate at through most of the pre-merge, and... Penner wins immunity, lives to see another day! Oh! Penner, safe tonight at Tribal Council, cannot be voted out of this game. Uh, I don't even know what to say about that challenge. That was maybe the best thing I ever did in my life. Pure joy and for good reason. Penner needed that win bad. At Tribal Council, Lisa says out loud to everyone that the target tonight was Penner, which is which is terrible. And then the target moved to Malcolm, but as it turns out, he has the idol from the Matt Singh tribe. Then Abby Maria is like, oh yeah, I have the idol from the Tandang tribe. So I guess at least everyone knows where the idols are at. Penner then proposes the idea to anyone not named Abby Maria, Artisan Pete, to vote one of them out. However, the votes are cast and revealed, and Jeff Kent is gone in a five to four to one vote. That one lone vote being from Penner for Abby Maria. Jeff, the job spoke. You know what pisses me off? Because I think I've made about $60 million playing baseball, and I want this freaking million dollars in this game. And it's not even a million bucks, it's 600 grand by the time Obama takes it. Episode nine starts with Abby Maria saying, I am upset that I got one vote. And Penner's like, yeah, I voted for you, but I thought we were all voting for you. Clearly, I was out of the loop at the last tribal council, and now I feel like a dead man walking. Penner realizes that Tandang is too strong, and while Malcolm and Denise are more of a free agent duo at the moment, all that is left from the original Calabau tribe is him and Carter, which isn't much. The five Tandang members have cracks, and he says he needs to learn how to exploit them. There have been such division, so many cracks in that five, and they're identities as people is so varied. You have two parents who are trying to play a straight up, almost Christian game in, in, in Lisa and in Scoop. And then you have three incredibly tight players who are playing some other game, what I call a bully game. My hope is to play on those divisions to appeal to Scoopin and Lisa's hearts. Lisa is struggling to play this game in any way that is interesting or that lets her make moves, and she clearly has had a traumatic past being a child actor and being taken advantage of, and those insecurities still plague her to this day. Penner can relate being in the film industry himself, he's seen this many times it sounds like, and he connects with Lisa on a level that no one else in this game can. I know exactly how. One look from the wrong person saying, gonna go out looking like that and you put on a couple of pounds. Oh my god, stop. You're killing me. So you had to be a police officer. I'm the breadwinner. I've got these responsibilities. Do you like me? Am I beautiful enough? Am I pretty enough? Am I staying pretty? Am I funny enough? I mean... Like last night, yeah. Have, How do you know? I want to keep it. That's my business too. You are maybe only now really getting to deal with how the toll, the cost of that extraordinary youth that you had. It did cost you something. You lost something. And now you know. Mm -hmm. And I love you. My whole life has been based on public perception. You know, I've lived my life on the stage since I was seven years old. I didn't mean to make that. No. No. His team then wins reward and they get to go to a local village to have a feast and hang out with the locals and their kids. Jonathan tries telling all these kids that, hey, in America, my name is normal, but the kids don't really get that. <laughs> my name is Jonathan. Yes. 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 In America, my name is normal. Normal. No, 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 when I say normal, no, I mean it's... it's, a, it's a, <laughs> But what makes him even more endearing is how he just loves to entertain and make these kids laugh by being a goof. It brings him joy, and that just radiates on screen. Am I close? We played a local game which is similar to a pinata kind of game that we would have, and I sort of, you know, joked around a little bit, and the kids went wild. 
Meanwhile, the losing team back at camp talking, once again, it seems like Penner is the target, but at this point, he's kind of the boring, easy target that everyone knows eventually will be voted out. However, in a scene that has no relation to Penner, but I am including it anyway, since Abby Maria has been driving Tandang up the wall, and this is kind of just like the perfect scene to show that, she does something that will not help her case at all moving forward. Oh, oh, God. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, are you okay? We then get a scene that when I first saw it, my eyes were opened to this show. Originally, Survivor was a fun game show that I knew I casually enjoyed, but didn't really understand why I did, I just knew that I did. But it was Penner who is a large part of why these Survivor story videos exist, and yes, I do know I'm breaking the fourth wall right now, but it's for good reason. Because he talks to Lisa and tries to sway her by appealing to her need to be liked by the audience, but he is clearly being genuine, despite this being a game. I'm like a storyteller, that's what I do, you know? Survivor is a big story. What's the story that's gonna be told this season? Who are the good guys and who are the bad guys? Who are the underdogs? Who is the audience gonna be rooting for, consciously or not? What does the audience want to have happen? The audience is gonna watch you. And they're gonna say, she's being loyal to the people that she's been loyal to all along, and that's a wonderful thing. But they are not gonna be happy that you are helping these three guys go further. Listen, I don't wanna get in your head. I'm not trying to, I'm just talking. This is my perspective on the story. Pender then talks to Scoopin and says, let's make a guaranteed Final Five deal. Once again, Scoopin is like, let me see about that. In the background of all of the Penner story is Denise making plans with Malcolm and Carter to vote out artists with Penner's help. At Tribal Council, it is a tight, tight vote. And... First vote. Artists. Penner. Artists. Artists. Penner. Penner. That's three votes, Penner. Penner. That's four votes, Penner. Artists. We're tied. Tenth person voted out the third member of our jury. Artists. Artists. Trump spoke. Scoopin' flipped, helping Penner narrowly escape elimination. Episode 10 sees Penner's team not winning reward, but Abby Maria gets to go on the reward. When she comes back from this, she goes on for far, far too long about how great it was, how amazing the view was, and oh man, the food was delicious. She ate so much, she feels like she's three months pregnant. I felt like I had like a three-month baby cooking in my belly. You know, it was breathtaking just arriving. Like, the site was just, like, something from, like, cover of a travel magazine. It had, like, the, the, the calamari with, the, like, the minty, yogurt like, type of sauce. And it was really cool. I felt like I was in paradise, literally. I felt like I was a peasant here, and then, like, a, a fairy just went, like, ding. Yeah. Yeah, the rewards are Everyone is kind of over Abby Maria, but she has an idol. Scoopin then talks to Lisa and says, I am kind of over Tandang. If we flip, who do you trust the most? She says, Penner. Apparently his relationship with her is finally paying off after she tried voting him out twice. So right now, Penner isn't really aligned with anyone that closely. He is loosely connected to Carter, Denise, and Malcolm, but that is mostly because he's just not part of Tandang. So Lisa and Scoopin offer him an elusive Final three deal. Lisa respects me. And she said, I want to go to the final three with you and Scoopin. That's a great option. But it's too early for me to say who I should go to the final three with. I will continue to keep them close. And if I get blindsided, more power to them. I will go out with my head held high. Penner didn't want to make that we're true to the end kind of deal. He said, let's just kind of get rid of these two and see how that shakes down. So I think he missed an opportunity. Now, Penner has some rationale in not fully trusting them after Lisa just tried voting him out twice, but Scoopin did flip the last vote to save Penner. He really should have just said yes. This is a massive blunder, and the story makes no bones about it. You always say yes, unless you hold an overwhelming majority and the numbers are clear that you cannot lose, and agreeing to a deal will just lose jury votes, which is rare, but it does happen. But in this case, this is not Penner. Penner is not in that situation. In fact, he's on the bottom. Before Tribal Council, Penner says the plan is to split votes on Abby and Pete if she doesn't play the idol, she's gone. He says this could be screwed up, but that's just life. If either Pete or Abby will go home, could it screw up? Yeah. 
but you know, you could get hit by a car walking from your house to the post box too. Then at Tribal Council, Penner is not shown to be a part of this, but everyone kind of rips Abby Maria a new one for being so socially unaware of what she's doing to those around her. She is rude, obnoxious, and loud. She had no idea that she was doing this people and literally cries. She of course plays her idol, and in a three to two to zero vote, Pete is gone. Pete, chapter spoken. Episode 11 sees Denise saying, obviously, unless Abby wins immunity, she is gone and Penner is of course safe. Great news for Penner, but now it is time for the survivor auction, something that should take place every season of the show. And Jeff puts a blind item up for bid and Penner wins it for a hundred bucks. But what did he win? Fried chicken. Even I can say from here, that looks pretty damn good. It's ridiculous. Now we remember how Penner famously cleaned up at the Cook Islands auction and the Philippines one is off to a good start as well. However, that's kind of all he gets. As everyone else scores big, especially Abby Maria who wins an advantage in the game, though we don't know what that is yet. Back at camp, Penner offers to talk to Abby to help her work out her feelings because she's still upset, rightfully so, from that last tribal council. He then does his best to try to explain what the others are feeling in a way that won't attack her, but she just attacks him instead of listening. Mind you, he didn't go after her at all at the last tribal, and what we are seeing here is a huge step forward for a guy who would have handled the situation a lot differently in his first season. What do I need to say? I don't know, I'm sorry maybe? In a game, if you are that blunt, that honest, it can feel off-putting. So, you might have been friendly. Thank you. Oh, don't give me a pat on the back. As it turns out, the advantage Abby Maria won lets her automatically advance to the final round of the immunity challenge, which helps her a ton to not get worn out on the other legs. And when it comes down to the wire between her, Carter, and Penner, it turns out... Abby slides down! Abby wins immunity! It's safe! Denise can't believe it. She wanted Abby gone. She says this is unreal. But back at camp, Malcolm says good. Now we can get rid of a real game threat like Penner. Lisa and Penner then talk and she says sorry. After you said no, Scoop and I kind of made a final four deal with Malcolm and Denise. And Penner says really? Because I didn't make an empty promise to you, I'm screwed? Because I didn't make empty promises after you had written my name down twice? Lisa once again lost her mind and uh, she had to confess to me that she was in another alliance, that she's voting for me tonight. And I guess to her credit, she's going to stick by her guns. She will not be swayed. I think her guns are ridiculous. This is I don't unbelievable. Wanna... This is unbelievable. All hope is not lost though, as Penner gets Carter and Abby to agree to vote out Denise, and he only needs one more vote to keep himself safe. He got scooping to flip before, maybe he can get him to flip again. He pitches a scooping once more to say, hey, please save me, and I will accept that final three deal offer you offered me. And he says, hey, at least us three would have a shot of winning the million because two returnees and a famous TV star in the final three wouldn't have to deal with the age old question of why someone without money deserves the win the game more. So when Penner goes to vote, Denise, <laughs> it is now time no idols are played and everything is on the line. As Jeff reads the votes. Denise. Penner. Two votes, Denise. Jonathan. Denise. Penner. Twelfth person voted out and the fifth member of our jury. Penner. Can I have a hug too? Yeah, no, I'm not gonna hug anybody else. Okay. Penner. Chop spoke. Keep your sunny side up and suck eggs. So let's break this down. How is Jonathan Penner as a character? What a character. He may not have been the best strategist, not even close, but we'll get to that later. But he's so full of charisma and he stands out as a great narrator and someone who can clearly explain their thoughts in an interesting way. He isn't afraid to break the mold and think outside of the way that most people do and isn't afraid to backtalk Jeff Probst. Penner makes this season better. And in a lot of ways, that's all I can ask for out of someone as a character. Do they make the season better or are they just a nobody? Or do they drag it down? Penner helps it. He went from villain in Cook Islands to a clear hero here, and the way he looks at Survivor as a story is 
game changing. From here on out, we will see future seasons where players do the same thing that Penner does to try and change the game in their own seasons. However, his kindness to others and his relationship with Lisa makes Penner a much more layered person than what we saw his previous times playing, and I love that. Also, I'll never forget him going to the village and just being awesome with those kids. Out of 23 character moments shown on the show, 18 were heroic and 5 were villainous, making Jonathan Penner a hero character on Survivor Philippines. Now, how is Jonathan Penner as a strategist? Very flawed, and I don't know if this could ever be fixed. Penner has flaws as a survivor player that's just kind of him as a human being. They make him a better person, but it makes him not that great at the game. He's unable to lie well. He can't read when others are lying to him. He doesn't understand the basic idea of just agreeing alliances no matter what, just in case. Yet he is great at puzzles. He played his idol perfectly and was able to win over people enough to get offered what would have been a final three deal that would have brought him to the end of the game, barring someone went on an immunity run and stopped him, of course. Penner was literally a potential final three deal from beating Lisa and Scoopin at Final Tribal. He just screwed up all the work he did with Lisa and Scoopin by saying, not now. It's a shame because he played an otherwise solid game and he has a great social game when he works at it. He just has some flaws that gets in the way. Out of 42 strategic moments shown on the show, 25 were smart and 17 were dumb, making Jonathan Penner a smart strategist on Survivor Philippines. Thanks for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.